Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, we are beginning another session of this course, and this is a session nine. And today we are going to talk about another of the four macro skills that we have to develop in the process of learning English. The first of the four macro skills that we study in this course was the speaking, I mean, the listening part. We were talking about the listening. So now we are going to talk about the uh, reading skill. We are going to talk about the different um, things that we do when we are writing a text, uh, how to improve that uh, skill when reading in English. And we are going to do some exercises that we are going to develop today. Those exercises are not like, um, in this case, the sentences that we are going to complete or we are going to uh, search for the verb, the subject, and all of the things. Because in this case, we are uh, trying to develop the reading part. Maybe we are not, um, we are not really good in this uh, reading skill, but it is not like uh, about the, the language. That's not the case. Maybe we don't like to read too much. Maybe we don't feel comfortable reading, or maybe we don't have the time to do it. So in this case, we are going to try to uh, develop this skill that is very important in the English language. So we are going to talk about the uh, reading skill and some um, things that we are going to do. So. Vamos a hablar de eh, la lectura. Vamos a hablar de cómo podemos hacer nosotros para mejorar este proceso de lectura. Vamos a hablar sobre estrategias que podemos hacer eh, al ser eh, personas que estamos aprendiendo un segundo idioma. Vamos a hacer algunos ejercicios que son ejercicios prácticos. Ya no tienen nada que ver con gramática en este momento, sino con la parte de lectura. So we are going to start. It says, the beginning of this, um, this topic says, uh, uh, a phrase that is uh, interesting. It says, no one is born knowing how to read. No one is born knowing how to read. Nadie nace sabiendo cómo leer. That's very true. Because we uh, begin a process in which we learn how to do it. We, uh, as a child, don't know anything about the letters, about the, the, the words, the sounds, and anything at all. So we are uh, having a process in which someone uh, help us to understand the letters and the order of the sentences and all of that. And in that case is our mom, our grandmother, uh, aunt, uncles, dad, a brother, a sister, and also the teachers that help us to read. So in this case, we are going to think about that time when we were child, when we were learning how to read. So becoming simply literate is not enough. It is not enough just to read, to know how to read. It's about to understand what we are reading. For academic and professional success, you need to learn how to read well. In this case, it's not talking about the language, it's the process of reading, because we need to um, know how to read well without uh, making mistakes in the process. But that's uh, something completely uh, different because we are uh, using just the language and uh, the learning process of the English language. ESL students, in this case, is the students that are learning a new language. In this case, it's English, English language. So we are uh, like ESL because we are learning a new language. 
in particular, need to develop the reading skill that will enable them to not only comprehend text in English, but also obtain what they need to deliver a response. Whether this is a written or a reply or an action they must take. These are the essential reading strategies that you should be uh, knowing. We have uh, seven uh, essential strategies that we are going to use uh, for the reading part. So we have seven reading strategies. We are going to develop uh, this topic in seven parts because we are going to talk about the seven reading strategies we are going to see the seven strategies and also we are going to do some examples or exercises in applying those strategies because we are going to have the, the knowledge in the topic, but also we are going to have the experience uh, doing at that strategy. So it says uh, that we have seven strategies. We are going to write it in the document to uh, see these uh, names of the strategies because we are going to start with that. So for the beginning, we are going to write seven strategies for uh, the reading process. And we have the number one. This is the name, Previewing. It's the preview. We are going to um, do something with the preview of the topic. So we have this preview wing, we are in G. What is this? And how can we use this in the reading process? It says it is absolutely essential for students to get a sense of what the text is about. The name itself gets um, some hints about the things that we are going to do with this strategy. The preview. We are going to get uh, to know what the text is about. It's like when we um, about a uh, uh, of or buy a book and we uh, search for the information or the basic information of the book. And in the, um, the back part of the books, we have some information about the, the story. In some cases, it has like a preview of the story and it has some details that help us to gain attention to the story. So in this case, we are going to know um, what the text is about. Elements that are usually helpful for previewing are newspaper headlines. The um, newspaper headlines, los títulos en los periódicos, or titles, or los títulos. Images or photos are signal words or format. For example, if the article has worked like first, second, third, at the beginning of each paragraph or is a numbered list, the students will get the sense that the text list steps or is a run up article. So in this case, when we have all the elements, we can uh, use the uh, newspaper headlines, we can use the titles, we can use some images of the topic. Uh, also, we can use photos. Um, we can uh, search for a specific words that can help us to understand what is the main topic of the article or the book or the things that we are going to read. Para la primera, estamos hablando de lo que nosotros podemos llegar a entender como primera parte de lo que vamos a leer. En este caso decíamos, un ejemplo claro, son los encabezados en los periódicos pero que también podemos utilizar lo que son imágenes, fotografías, eh, títulos, y muchos elementos más para saber de qué va a tratar lo que vamos a leer, ya sea un, eh, una historia, un artículo, etcétera, etcétera. So, 
uh, we're going to uh, write the elements that we can use in uh, this uh, strategy for the preview. Uh, we have some elements, some elements that we can use to have an idea about the text that we are going to read. And we have the elements. We have the um, headlines or newspaper headlines. Titles. Images. Or photos. Signal words. Or formats. So those are uh, some elements that we can use uh, when we want to know what is the text about without reading it. Because in this case, it is not like we are going to read the whole paragraph to know what is the text about. In this case, uh, it's to know what is the, um, the news, the article, the topic uh, that it's um, maybe it is about. So we are just, uh, guessing. In this case, we can use the word guessing for the uh, explanation or for the topic that is going to be developed in the um, the book, in the newspaper, or in something like that. So we are going to do the first uh, exercise because in this case, we are going to guess. So I will uh, read the headline of a newspaper and you have to tell me what do you think the article will be about just based on the headline we are going to read the headline then we are going to tell what is the news about so let's see Let's see one uh, of these headlines that is very, very interesting. Okay, we have this one that is very chaotic, but we have this headline and it says, earthquake, earthquake and fire, San Francisco in ruins, earthquake and fire, San Francisco in ruins. So we are going to write the exercise here. Reading exercise, I guess. Reading. Okay. We have the headline. And this is the headline. Again, earthquake and a fire. San Francisco in ruins. That's our headline. Earthquake and fire, San Francisco in ruins. What do you think the article is about with the headline? What is your opinion? It is about an earthquake that happened in San Francisco. Okay, it's uh, about something natural like an earthquake that happened in San Francisco. Another thing that you think with the headline? In this case, it's very simple to understand what is the headline about because we are seeing two things that are very terrible, the earthquake 
and the fire and this mix together is a very chaotic. So in this case, we have earthquake that in Spanish is a terremoto, es un movimiento de la tierra and fire, you know that fire is a fuego. So in this case, it's talking about something that happened in San Francisco that led that city in ruins because it attacks by earthquake and fire at the same time, it is very chaotic. So in this case, we have the headline that is very easy to understand that something bad happened. That's the, the context of the article. Uh, inform the people that something like this happened in San Francisco. And also the article uh, tells about how many people died or what are the effects that it, um, this earthquake caused in, in the city. So in this case, it's very simple to have a preview of the article just for the headline, because we know that in some cases, the headline is very specific about the, the topic that we are going to read in a newspaper. Then we have the second one, because we are going to do it like this. We are going to uh, name the strategy, then we are going to do the example or the exercise that is um, like the first one. So we have the number one, Contextualizing, we are going to use the context of something. It is always helpful for students or people that is learning uh, something new to learn to place the text within a context. Is the news articles centered on something that happens everywhere in the world or just in one specific location? It is something that affects you, the reader, or other people in the world. Does the main character in the story go through something you can relate to or something you have no experience in? These are great questions for students to think about as they read. We have simple questions to make us enter the context of the article or the story. In this case, we are talking about uh, not just the headline, not just uh, the, the news, not just the text itself. We are thinking about the action that is happening. Maybe this action can affect me or in the story, I can say, oh, something like that happened to me. And we have this question. We are going to see the questions. Questions. And we have number one, is the news article centered on something that happens everywhere in the world or just in a specific location? That's the first one. Is the news article centered on something that happens everywhere in the world or just in one specific location. Okay, with this question, we can um, make limits of the information because we are going to see the, the headline of the previous example. Earthquake and fire, we have that a uh, headline, but we don't know where is the earthquake and the fire. Just, we just know that happened an earthquake and a fire. And we are going to read and think, where is this uh, event happening? It is in my city, it is in my country, it is in my region, it is in another country. So in this case, we are going to think, is the news article center on something that happens everywhere in all of the planet, or in this case, it is just in one location. Also, we can use headlines that talk about the violence, and maybe some attack, and something dies, um, it was a, a, a war that is going to happen. 
and we want to know where, because maybe this can affect my life if I know where is the action uh, happening. En la parte número dos del contexto, vamos a eh, limitar nuestra información, porque sabemos que hay cosas que no pasan siempre en el, en, en el mismo lugar, sino en diferentes lugares, y a veces no dan las noticias con exactitud del lugar donde pasan. La primera pregunta, is the news article centered on something that happened everywhere in the world or just in one specific location? La noticia, el artículo, es algo que está pasando en todo el mundo o solo en un solo lugar? That's a, one of the questions. Then we have another question that says, is this something that affects you? In this case, the reader. Or other people in the world. So this is another question that, that can make limits of the information because in this case we can know uh, who are the people that is going to be affected by that uh, uh, news. We can uh, make an example. We can say. Uh, for the, the, the crisis in the economy part, some, um, some, how can we say it? Um, some uh, branches or, or some uh, jobs are going to disappear. And we can uh, publish a list of all the things that are going to disappear. So we are going to use that list to know if in that case, I can be affected or it is just another people that is going to be affected. En la segunda pregunta, ¿es algo que me va a afectar a mí como lector o a otras personas en el mundo? Eh, pueden cerrar empresas, pueden cerrar compañías, pueden cerrar marcas. Y si yo trabajo para alguna de esas marcas, alguna de esas compañías, alguna de, de esas eh, empresas, ¿me puede afectar a mí o simplemente le va a afectar a otras personas? That's two questions. The location and the way that the, this uh, news affect my job or my life. On in, the, in this case, we have also the books. And it says, does the main character in the story go through something you can relate to. For something you have to experience it. So in this case, when we are reading a book, we know that uh, in some cases is a fiction, something fantastic uh, that happens in imaginary worlds. But in some cases, when we read some kind of books, we know that they are based on um, real things, real cases. So maybe in the fiction or in those cases that uh, they are using, in um, real cases, we can uh, think about the main character is uh, facing something that I can relate, something that happened to me in the past, or I am living in this moment, or something you have uh, uh, no experience in. Maybe you don't have any experience about adventure, uh, something about um, healthy problems, uh, something about uh, money, because they talk about money also, the problems with money, uh, problems with uh, drugs or something like that. So in that case, when we are reading, we know that we can create 
a new uh, word in our minds because we are using the imagination. So in those cases, we can uh, say, oh, that's very um, interesting. And I want to know more about that. But in some cases, we don't have the experience to um, make the comparison or some things that, that is happening in the book and something that is happening in the in the real life because we are not experienced about that a specific action and that is happening in the book but in some cases we have uh, some experience or some um stories that uh, happen to us related to the things that are happening in the books maybe the character is um happening something uh, emotional because he has some problems uh, he or she has no money uh, he or she has no no job and is working or is searching for a new job is is happening something with the family they have problems there are a lot of things so we can ask us if the things that are happening in the books can be related in our daily life. Pregunta tres, el personaje principal de la historia está pasando por algo que yo puedo eh, decir con seguridad que a mí también me ha pasado o me pasó o me está pasando o es algo en lo que yo no tengo experiencia. Yo puedo eh, sentirme unido con, el, 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 a, con la persona que, de la que está hablando la historia porque estamos viviendo cosas similares. So we are going to uh, talk about the exercise. So in this case, we are talking about context. So we are going to enter in context. We have something uh, that it's called education in Britain. Education in Britain, that is an article. So with the name of the article, we know that we are not going to talk about our country. We are going to talk about another country and the educational system of that country. So we have reading exercise number two. We have the headline that is education in Britain. Okay, that's the, the, the topic. But before entering the text, we are going to ask some questions because we need to enter in the context. And we know that we are in a different educational system in our country that is very different for the educational system in other countries. So we can, um, we have some questions that we can ask before entering the text. And we have these questions. First, how many years of grade school are there? How many years of a grade school are there? So in this case, it's talking about the country that we are living in, in this moment. So how many years of grade school are there? Then, how many years of high school Then uh, we can read the, the text. So in this case, we're going to ask some things. In this case, it is just the example. Uh, in, in that case, when we are going to read something about another country, and in this case, we know by the name of the article that is talking about education, uh, we can ask some question, or, or maybe we also can ask question to, to ourselves. So in this case, we can think, okay, I'm going to read something about another country, about education and the system that they have. So first, I need to have a clear idea of the things I uh, want to compare 
because we are going to make a comparison of the things that we are going to find in uh, this article. So in this case, for example, how many years of grade school are there? How many years of high school? Maybe how many subjects do we study when we are um, in this process of learning? Um, for example, uh, the name of the subjects. Um, also, we can uh, talk about the time that we uh, have in the classrooms, the condition of the schools, uh, extra course that we can take in the schools or in the private school. Also, we can uh, talk about the universities, the public university, the private university, and um, the level of education that we have, then we can read the text and find those information that we are asking us about our system and make the comparison. And we can see that there is another word in that countries about educational system. So in this case, it is context. We are going to put um, our ideas in context for the uh, text that we are going to read. Para la parte 2, estamos hablando del contexto. Antes de leer un texto, nos ponemos nosotros, así como lo dice ahí el nombre, en contexto de qué es lo que vamos a leer. Nos hacemos una idea. Ya, tenemos una idea, nos ponemos en sintonía con la idea que tenemos sobre el tema. Porque ya tenemos el nombre del artículo que vamos a utilizar y podemos hacer primero una lista de cosas que pasan en nuestro país Luego buscamos esa información que esté eh, relacionada con, con, esa, con esa parte y ya tenemos nuestro contexto. Then, we have number three. And this one is, um, in this case, we are going to use the imagination. We have number three, that is visualizing. Visualizing. So in this case, some students, especially those who are visual learners, need to see the information. Can you see the main character in your minds? I based on the description. Can you picture the contaminated river as described in the news article? Visualizing also improves organizing the information in a visual way usually through the use of a mind map or other uh, graphic organizers. So in this case, visualizing, we need to visualize what we are reading. Uh, we know that um, we are very different uh, people um, and we have different ways to learn. Maybe you can learn by hearing someone talking about a topic. Uh, also, we can uh, learn touching the things, doing the things, and some people uh, learn uh, seeing the things, imaginating uh, the, the things that is happening when someone is uh, reading or uh, when someone is talking. So in this case, we need to see uh, images, uh, photos, um, mental maps, or all of the things. So in this case, we hear an information, for example, I have this sentence, um, the flower is red. When we read or hear that sentence, the flower is red in Spanish, la flor es roja. When I, uh, uh, I hear that or I read that, I can imagine what? A red flower, because I am not changing the color. I am imagining that thing like that. Estoy imaginando lo que estoy leyendo. Estoy creando una imagen mental because I need to know what is happening. What are the actions? Um, for example, I can see um, something in my mind. Uh, I have a lot of information that I have to read and I feel tired of reading everything and nothing um, is in my mind because I am blank. What can I do? to remember some information. So in that case, I am reading something I can put into simple words and create a map, right? A map 
that I can uh, use for uh, knowing the information. So in this case, visualizing is like that. I read the information, then I create a map that help me to understand what is the text about. So we have simple uh, question. Can you see the main character? in your minds i based on the description we are very um very interesting uh, beings uh, because when we are reading something or we are listening something, we can create an image in our minds. For example, when we are reading a book and it's that kind of books that we, uh, in some cases enjoy because uh, it doesn't have any pictures in there um, because we, we prefer that kind of books. So in those books, um, we have a specific part in which uh, the writer is uh, describing the person that is uh, participating in the story and is very uh, specific about the, 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 uh, the physical appearance that uh, that person has. And we can create an image of that person and we can uh, see every detail that that person has based on the description that the, read, the, the writer is giving to us. So in those cases, we can see the person with our mind eyes based on the description. We can read something that says, um, that boy was tall, very tall. It was black. Uh, hair with green eyes um, with a tan skin. Uh, it has a bright smile and uh, his hair was straight. All of the things that the, the, the writer is giving us to create our own character of the story. So we can use those uh, words as a uh, pieces of a puzzle and we can create the image. Then, can you picture the contaminated river as described in the news article? So in this case, when we are reading an article in the newspaper, uh, we can um, read something about a river that is very, very contaminated uh, with garbage. And in that um, moment, we can visualize the place. We can see through the words, uh, the, the specific place that the article is, um, is um, uh, talking about so we can create all of that things in our minds and that's the the third part then we have um in this case we have the reading exercise and it says we have a text called by the river i mean what by the water that's the name of the article by the water and when we are reading and the name, we are going to start with the name. Exercise. By the water, by the water, by the water, like it says in another countries. By the water, that's the name. So, in that case, we, uh, 
it is not necessary to read the article to know that in this case, we are going to talk about water, everything that is related to water. So in that case, what kind of images that we can see by the name of this article? Vamos a ver, ¿qué imágenes se le vienen a ustedes a la mente cuando decimos el nombre de ese artículo? By the water. Can we have something in our minds about uh, the word water? Let, let's take care of the water. Okay, let's take care of the water. Something else? Water, we are talking- Hey, classmates. They are uh, sleeping right now. They are not mo very motivated uh, tonight. Something else that we can say about the water. Oh my God, they don't know anything about the water. What's, what's, what, what, what? Okay, I will help you with this uh, topic. It's very simple. When we are talking about water, I can imagine the river. I can imagine a glass of water. I can imagine the sun, the, the, the sun uh, shining on the water. I can think about fishes. I can think about ducks that are um, swimming in the water. I can imagine um, a place very quiet with a, a lake in the middle of that place that is a very, very clear water. And it has a lot of uh, plants, flowers, butterflies, and all of that a small insect. Also, I can imagine a hot a, a shower or a cold shower or a rainy forest in the forest that, that is raining in this moment. I can imagine a lot of things when I see the name of water. I think you can uh, think a lot of things when we read the, the word water, but that's okay. Teacher, tell me. But in El Salvador, it is very difficult to think about those things because yes, I know. If we uh, imagine if we imagine the Asale Water River. Oh my God, <laughs> it is so contaminated. Okay, but in that in that case, we can uh, think about contamination. <laughs> yeah, pollution. Of course, uh, but. We are using the imagination. So in this case, we are uh, we can have two parts. The part that Sandra is saying that we can uh, think about the reality of the the water, and also we can uh, have the fantasy that I am saying about the the pretty things about the water. So we can have those things. Maybe she is talking about the articles in the newspaper that is talking about something really bad, about contamination, about uh, garbage, about uh, all of the things. And I am using uh, the image of something that is uh, reading a book because that is uh, really fantasizing. So visualizing, we can see things through one word, through the words or through the articles or through a story. But that's okay, we can see every part of the other words, the good and the bad. That's very important to know. Then yeah. we have another teacher, thing, the number four. May I teach? May I? Yes, yes. Oh, well, also we can, we, but, but not only we have a, a polluted rivers, but we have also waterfalls in mm -hmm. uh, Apaneca, for example, uh, we have, Las Cascadas de Don Juan. Uh -huh, Those are exactly. very clear and very delicious water there. Yes, and in, in our country, we have a lot of uh, beautiful places uh, that have this kind of 
clear waters, but also we know that we need to uh, to um to take care of those places because we know that we have a society that is not really really clean because we are going to say yeah. that they are not very clean and they don't have the specific uh, places to put the garbage but in this case we have those uh, places that are very beautiful and it's that one of the things that uh, we have that is the biggest that is the tourism that we have in the country but yeah in that case it's the both things the good and the, and the bad because we have a, a lot of both so that's okay then we have the number four asking and answering questions this is very common in a reading process because we need to need information so asking and answering and this is something that all of us uh, uh, do when we are reading and even when we are hearing something but in this case what questions come to mind when you preview in an article ¿Qué preguntas se nos vienen a la cabeza cuando estamos haciendo el preview eh, o estamos eh, tratando de entender de qué va a tratar el artículo? Well, how will the main character solve this problem? In this case, we are talking about um, real people or fictitious people, and we can use this question um, in every uh, space, in articles or in books. So we have question number one. This is an example. This is not like uh, all the time we ask these kind of questions but we have the number one how will the main character how will the main character solve this problem then we have um, in this kind of uh, things this is not the only question that we can ask in our minds. Uh, in this case, we are going to ask, uh, for example, the date, when this happened. Um, we are going to ask for details because we need to understand what is happening in this article or in this situation. Uh, we are going to ask what is the ending of the story um, if someone gets hurt or that things that details that we want so in this case we have a piece of this kind of articles it says boston marathon it's an article and we can uh, have three questions about the article for example we have a uh, this article this is the the example we are going to do it like this example we have the name, Boston Marathon. And we can ask questions about this article. Maybe I can ask this question. What is the purpose of this activity? What is the purpose of this activity? Because I am going to uh, read something about the Boston Marathon. What is the purpose of this activity? Because we know that in this case, these activities has a purpose. Then, when did this activity, activity take place? When, this, uh, when did this activity take place? Uh, the day when did um, this activity happen? And if we are reading uh, the article and uh, we can find that something bad happened, uh, we can ask, why did that people do that? because it was an accident, it was something bad that happened. We can ask, why did that people do that? What is the purpose of that people doing something bad in that activity? And we can use this kind of questions to 
understand the article and the action that is happening in that moment. Then we have, at this moment, we have four uh, strategies. We have in the first one, that is the first that we were um, reading, that is the preview. We have uh, steps, we have the preview, then we have the context of that, then we have the visualizing of the actions, uh, we, are, we are creating images, then we are asking and answering question by ourselves. Then we have the number five. Number five, and it's called, and in this case, it is not four because it's number five. I'm going to take this off because it is changing the order. Okay, now we have number five. Okay, we have this number five that is summarizing. Summarizing after the reading. This is after the reading. Uh, people should be able to summarize what they have read. This may be a short oral summary or a full paragraph. Summarizing includes a very important skill, getting the gifts the, or getting the gist. What was the main point in the story? Summarizing is not retelling everything that happened and it happened. And, it, and people need to not only tell the difference, but also uh, learn to give back information in a clear, concise manner. This is uh, very important because when we are reading an article and someone asks us, uh, what is the article about? We uh, need to have this kind of summarize in, in which we can give the details eh, that are very important in the article. En la número cinco, vamos a hacer un resumen de lo que leímos. No vamos a decir todo exactamente así como sale ahí o como decimos comúnmente con pelos y señales. No, in that case, we are going to search for a specific information and we are giving that information to the people that wants to know what is the article about. It is not telling everything that I have read because I am not going to remember everything in that uh, moment, but I can give something in a specific. So we have a, a reading and I, like, uh, I would like you read this a thing that I will send you to the group. It's a link I will send you because we have something called Helen of Troy. It is called Helen of Troy. And we are going to read the story and then you are going to tell me what did you understand about, about Troy of um, Helen of Troy. So I will send you a link to the group and uh, you can uh, read the article there. Um, and if you have a uh, problems with the article, you can tell me. You will find some information at the beginning of the uh, website, but then you um, will find uh, the story. So I will send you in this moment. Okay. Okay, there is the article. Then you enter the website and you will find some information there. There is like um, audio. Then we have some information about the Greek uh, mythology. Then the judgment of Paris, Eris, sources and all of that. Then you have the, uh, the story. And in this case, we have the, the audio that uh, have a duration of 
13.5 minutes, but in this case, you have to read the information that is there. And then you will give me information about the, uh, the story that you are reading, because we are going to um, put this, uh, those things into experience, because we are going to experience what is to give a summarize about the things that we are reading. So uh, time is in your favor because it is time to end the session. So tomorrow we are going to give the uh, summarize of this story of Helen of Troy. And that's the first thing we are going to do tomorrow. So we are going to end the session, read the uh, story that is very interesting because it is talking about uh, some chaos that was created in a wedding and why the goddess um, uh, choose parties for the things that they are planning. But I'm not giving you a lot of information. So we are going to end the session. Tomorrow we are going to uh, give the summarize of the Helen of Troy and continue with the other um, strategies that we need to know about reading process. So have a good night and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night.